Hi, this is Ed Moten from ERM Performance Tuning, and this is another in a series of videos that we're putting out to introduce our brand new version 2.0 training materials. Um, there was some discussion in the um, previous video about um, a course module 10, which was added, which is the um, the step-by-step -step tuning um, tutorial that we've added and which we think will uh, bring uh, a lot of good information to would-be tuners and even some tuners who maybe just didn't even think about looking at specific tables that, that we might be referencing. Um, so course module 10 basically is going to start out with uh, a, a short introduction, which is what we normally have. And then we also will get into some of the um, uh, details relative to just just kind of getting started, uh, you know, preparing your tune file. You know, do we, do we go back to stock? You know, there's a lot of times tuners like myself. Uh, if you're in the business, uh, you'll get a vehicle that's already been tuned previously, and there's always this decision as to whether you want to build on top of that or do you want to start over and and build your own. So um, there's a couple of uh, uh, points to be made as far as starting over, but certainly, um, you know, uh, I, I prefer to start over just because then I know exactly what I've got and then who can I blame but myself, right? Um, and then we'll go through uh, the startup uh, files and go through uh, various different reasons or, or means by which we need to um, address a stock file or the existing file that we have on board. As far as mechanical related changes, um, power adder changes is what we call them as far as camshafts and forced induction and things of that nature. Um, and then at the very end, we have a, a link that will take us to the uh, PowerPoint presentation, which then will go on to address every um, every table that's uh, that's important to hit um, as, we, as we move forward with this. So again, there's an introduction, a short introduction for it. What should we do with the file? You know, should we go back to stock or, or what? Um, as is most of the, uh, not, I shouldn't say most, all of the uh, tutorials, they're all set up to basically provide the information to you, and then if there was important areas to go back to or to address as well on top of that, then we have what we call hyperlinks that are that are designed in there. And you'll see them, they'll be usually a color blue, and if you put your cursor over them, they'll give you all this mumble bumble, but that's basically tell, linking you to, uh, to this particular area. So when we're doing long tube headers and things of that nature, there's, there's some good information that resides in, in course module 11, the tuning strategies. So if you double click on that, after permission, it will actually come and open up your um, course module 11 and allow you access to that material as well. Okay, and then when you're finished with that, basically just shut down, close the current tab, and it'll bring you back to wherever you were when you got there. So that's kind of a, a, a nice, uh, thing that we've added to, to the tutorial as well. Um, we won't go through any of this. We'll go to the end because at the end is where we're going to actually um, finish up, do the things we need to do in this particular case. The last thing uh, to address is the map sensor. And this is just a little bit on what the map sensor is going to do. And then um, we uh, come all the way down to the most important link that there is. And this is the link to the tuning strategy and the starter file development presentation. And this one is, this is the one that, that we're, again, we're most proud of. All right, so when we open this up, what, we're gonna, what you're gonna begin to see is a PowerPoint presentation. And the PowerPoint presentation is going to basically take you through, there's about 47 pages to this, um, this presentation and it's going to take you through all kinds of how to establish a tuning strategy, how to build a build questionnaire, which is what we call a build questionnaire, which is where you're going to provide all of the different modifications that you've made to the platform. And uh, it's really important that you get all of the mods 
out in the open so that you can address them all. And inevitably, we're always forgetting certain mods. So the build questionnaire is there for you to be able to, again, write down all of the changes that you've made to the vehicle. We use it specifically for new clients. When we get a new vehicle to tune, we ask that the client fill those out. They fill it out, and what it does is it provides us with a good baseline to understand exactly what the vehicle makeup is and, and how we would go about wanting to tune that particular setup. A uh, bunch of questions that we're going to be asking as we go through all of this, right? Open and closed loop. Are we going to tune it in math or VE or are we going to go to blended, right? Uh, is it naturally aspirated, forced inducted, and all kinds of different things, right? Um, one of the biggest problems with tuning and one of the more important pieces of information that we have is accurate uh, injector data. Um, there is a module that goes through all of that to help you as a, either a tuner or somebody looking to buy injectors on what are the right injectors to buy that have accurate data that we're not going to have to fight with the injector data um, as well as uh, trying to figure out and make it up if we have to if, because nobody has it. So um, then there, obviously the um, how big is my cam and, and what do I need? What, what kind of changes do I have to make? There's a, there's a great uh, chart which we put together which will give you a lot of insight to how to set up your tune uh, for that. Um, the way that I kind of recommend that we go through that you go through this is instead of in the PowerPoint presentation mode, which is where we're at today, um, if you close that down and you bring up your file, you can actually get them to, to split screen. Um, and what makes what's nice about this split screen is is that we can go to a specific area all right and then the presentation will actually take you and show you what the paths are to arrive at a specific area right so we're starting out at the very beginning and the path is engine in general so we know that in that particular case we need to go to engine in general oh we're in diagnostics i'm sorry engine in general and then we now begin to see the tables which the presentation is defining and what are the things that we need to do to to, to address those okay um, if we look at the engine size right we have the volumes and things that we need to fill out it says use the unit conversion and we can use the unit conversion from the editor down in here so that we can calculate if we know the cubic inches but don't know the liters and vice versa, um, we can calculate it through there. Um, engine idle RPM, we can go through engine idle and RPM, and we'll know exactly what are the things that we're looking to change, right? And it'll take you for each table, base idle RPM, base idle RPM, here's your target, open up the table. Um, the values for idle RPMs are defined within that table that I spoke of uh, earlier so you'll know exactly what kind of values that you're going to need to uh, to increase these values based on the specific cam that you have uh, for an example if you had a 10 percent a 10 degree overlap rather um, we'd be looking for a idle rpm of about 800 um, then if your stock operating is like 550 in this particular case it's 650 but you would then add 300 in an effort to get you up to the 8, 850 that we'd be looking for to get there so again it'll, it'll spell out all the things that you're going to do to have to make changes to it right startup idle is covered and these tables are also defined in gen 3 and gen 4 because you will find the gen 3 tables are some are the same but there are some differences as well so you'll be able to move through these particular elements and move through your tune and make the changes that are necessary to be made the adaptive idle all of the training and all of the all of the tuning procedures are resident in course module 8 so again you'll have the ability to be able to hyperlink over to course module 8 if you have to go back for for any things that you may you know a refresher or information that you may need to pick up to, uh, to to complete that portion of the tune if we come off to let's see another example would be uh, this particular slide here let's say uh, power enrichment right so we know that we need to go from engine right we fuel and power enrichment 
and the tables that we're looking at will appear to us. And again, there will be differences between three and four. Um, and again, we try to address each one of those as far as uh, why we, that you'll be seeing different things. So you basically, in this particular case, it's telling us that the map, we want to be 85 kPa. So we know basically the changes changed to 15 to 85. Okay. If the torque is present, wants to be 50%. Now, in this particular case, we don't have a torque value. That's usually a, a Gen 4 as well. Um, and then we come down to the pedal and we begin to do the things that it says, right? For Gen 3 values, we want the TPS to be set to somewhere around 15 or 20. You can always set it to 15% and then just let that go. Um, power enrichment table, same thing. If it's time to increase that, we go to the EQ, as it says, and then depending on what vehicle you're using, if it's an NA car, then you want the values to be between 1.15 and 1.17. If it's a forced induction car, you want them to be between 1.27 and 1.3. So all the values that you're going to need to develop this, your initial starter program is going to be made available to you through this, this uh, section. Um, one last uh, example, if we went to, let's say, slide 22, spark correction, right? We would come over to, uh, to spark, over to spark correction, and we would see that each one of the uh, tables that are available to us, AFR correction, right? Zero of these tables, right? We zero them because we don't want in this particular case, we're not interested in having these tables add or subtract timing for us based on the AFR. We're going to tune the vehicle based on whatever AFR it's in. So we, we don't need anything else helping us or, or, or too many places changing or adding, wanting to add or subtract timing. It gets a little too confusing. So what we're trying to do is limit the number of inputs that we have as far as that goes. And basically the same thing for the IAT Spark, right? We're basically telling you shift the table to the right from the 86 degrees or the first column with a negative value to 113, right? So if we open up this table, we can see that 86, we have this value. So again, what we're saying is shift the table. And when we talk about shifting a table, it's kind of simple. We just take the table, right? We copy it. Then we come over to the 113. We paste it. Okay, so that's moved all that data over four columns, and then we basically just come in here and zero these out to bring them back to where they're not active. And what we've now done is instead of an 86 degree intake air temp pulling timing, we're going to forego that until about 113, which is, it's not that critical. Remember, GM is trying to honor a warranty. In this particular case, you would be pulling timing way too early. And probably one of the biggest bangs for the buck will be when you actually can um, not pull the timing at this point, and you'll you'll see a big power uh, improvement over that as well, um, as is the rest of these. So I think you can see here that we, what we've done is we've managed to to take each of the tables. There's an explanation as to what needs to be done, and I think in this particular case we have given the step-by-step procedure that everybody's been asking for, and, and we're really proud and happy to be able to do that. So that concludes this demonstration of the step-by-step, uh, -step, and uh, we thank you for listening. And again, uh, please go to our website, www.ermperformancetuning.com, and look at our products and wares, and hopefully you'll be interested in buying this training course from us. The new version 2.0 is out. Thank you so much, and have a great night. Bye-bye.